Okay, in this video, I am going to discuss function composition and do a couple examples from four, five, day two. Um, so in this lesson, we are looking at the composition of functions, which is when I create um, one function by substituting into another function. So if I have the notation f with that open circle and then g, that's telling me f of g. So we say this, f of g of x. And so the notation um, is equivalent here. That's why we're given this equation. Um, so when I'm given f of g of x, I can write it as parentheses, which is a little more intuitive as to what we're doing. So this shows us that we're taking f and we're plugging it into g. And so just a kind of visual with an example is if f of x is 3x plus 3 over x plus 2 and g of x is x squared plus x, and I want to identify f of g, that's telling me I want to take g and plug it into f. So this notation kind of goes from right to left. So I'm taking the entire function g of x and plugging it into f of x. And so when I'm doing that, I'm taking all of g, which is x squared plus x, and I'm replacing that single x that was in f of x with that entire equation. So that means that I have would have 3 over x squared plus x plus 2 for um, f of g of x. If I switch the order, I am switching the process. And so what's happening with g of f of x, that's telling us to take f of x and plug it into g of x. And so we're replacing all of the x's in g with the entire function f of x. So 3 over x plus 2 is going to replace each of the x's in g of x. So if there's multiple x's, I have multiple replacements with that function. Um, so when we're doing these problems, we do simplify at the end. This really is just an, a visual for um, the definition of composition so that you can see what we're doing within each step. So when I'm um, doing function composition, I'm taking and replacing the variable with an entire equation rather than replacing the variable with a number. So we will see somewhere we're replacing with the number on the back of the um, notes. But for now, we're going to look at example two, where they're asking us to do f of g and g of x. So remember that the way that this works is it's telling us to plug g into f. So we want to evaluate f of g of x, meaning I want to plug g of x into f of x. So I want to substitute in that equation. In this situation, g of x is 4 minus x and f of x is x squared plus x plus 2. So what that means is I'm going to substitute into f the expression 4 minus x. So that means that each x that I have in f, so an x squared and an x, I'm going to replace that with all of g of x. So I'm going to rewrite f with some space so that I can plug things in. So instead of each x, I'm always going to write a space for me to write the um, expression that I'm substituting in. I'm also always going to put parentheses so that I can remember to distribute or do things like that um, depending upon the operation that's being asked. So I'm plugging 4 minus x into each of those spaces. So I took away the original x that I highlighted and I replaced it with parentheses around the entire function for g. So when I'm doing this, I need to simplify each piece of this so that I can um, get a final answer that's just a regular polynomial. So if I have 4 minus x squared, that means we want to multiply 4 minus x times itself. Um, I have a plus sign in front of parentheses. That means that I can just drop the parentheses. If that was a negative, I would have to distribute. So I've got plus 4 minus x and then plus 2. So in the next step, what I can do is multiply out the 4 minus x times the 4 minus x, and then I'll, um, I can combine some terms too. So 4 times at 4 is 16. 4 times negative x is negative 4x, as is negative x times 4. And then negative x times negative x is plus x squared. Um, just to save us a little bit of time later, we can combine the 4 and the 2. So we have this negative x still, and then plus 6. 
So in our final answer, we're going to combine all the like terms and write this in standard form. So notice we have an x squared, so let's start with that. And then we have negative 4x minus 4x, so negative 8x minus x, negative 9x. And finally, we have 16, oh, I don't know why I changed my color. And then finally, we have 16 plus 6, so that's going to give us plus 22 for this expression. So f of g of x is equal to x squared minus 9x plus 22. In part b, we're going to do the same process, but backwards. So this is telling us to take f and plug it into g. So we're going to have g of x be our base function, and f of x be the equation that we're substituting in. So we're going to take g of x this time and plug in 4 minus, sorry, x squared plus x plus 2. So g of x has 1x, which is nice. So we're only plugging into one place. So we're taking and plugging in x squared plus x plus 2 into 4 minus x. So we're going to replace that x with x squared plus x plus 2. Um, in the last problem, we had addition, so we just dropped the parentheses. Since this problem has subtraction, we do need to use that to change all the signs of our um, function f. So we're going to have negative x squared minus x minus 2 with that original 4. So we have 4 minus x squared minus x minus 2 which means that if we combine like terms, g of f of x is equal to negative x squared minus x and then plus two. So notice that they're different and that's common. So we will talk about um, later next week when these two things are equal, it does mean something specific. And so in this situation, since they're both different, um, that doesn't we aren't going to be able to draw any conclusions about the two functions relationships. Um, so again, we're taking the entire function. So if I don't have a variable or if it gives me an X, that's when I'm just taking an equation and plugging it in. So notice we really only had one plugging in step for this example. When we do example three, we're going to plug in twice. And so this is because instead of having a variable, they're giving us a value to evaluate a function at. So in example three, we're given two functions and they give us three different things to do. Um, in this video, I'm just gonna do the first two so that you can have the second one kind of to practice um, on your own if you're watching this to take the notes. Um, so for f of x equals two x minus one and g of x equals three x squared minus one, they want us to find f of g of three. And so when we're doing this, we're still going from right to left. And so this is telling us to first plug 3 into G. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to evaluate G of 3 and identify what, what that is, meaning we're going to take 3 and plug it into the equation for G of X. So this is just normal substitution, what you're used to with values. You could use your calculator. You can um, do the operations in your head, whatever you're comfortable with. So I'm evaluating g of 3, which means I'm doing 3 times 3 squared minus 1. So 3 times 3 squared is 3 times 9. If that makes 27, if I subtract 1, that gives us an answer of 26. So what I found is g of 3. And so looking at my original equation, I am supposed to find f of g of three. And so what I've just figured out is that g of three is equivalent to 26. So I'm going to replace g of three with that value rather than the equation. So that means that I want to find f of 26. So I'm going to take 26 now and plug it into f. So that means that I'm going to take 
2 times x minus 1, and I'm going to plug 26 in for that value for f, for x, I'm sorry. And so 2 times 26 gives us 52. 52 minus 1 is 51. So that means that the answer to this problem is 51. So really think about it as though we're doing two steps. So we're starting here with the g of 3 piece, and then we're just evaluating that on its own. And then once we find that value, we're taking that value and plugging it back in for g of 3, which tells us that we're plugging our answer into f. Okay, so it's like a, it's a chain. And so in the first one, we only did one expression because x was already plugged in. So we only plugged a whole function into f in example two. Here we're doing a chain reaction. We're plugging a number into the um, function that it, the number is closest to, and then we're taking that answer and plugging it into the other function. So I'm gonna do one more just um, to make sure that we're good with this. And for this one, we're doing it backwards, but they also change the number. So this problem is asking us to plug two into F. So we're gonna take two and replace um, X in F with that value. So F of two means they want us to evaluate two times two minus one. And so if I take and plug in the value two for x, two times two is four, and then four minus one gives us three. So f of two equals four minus one, which is three. So that means that g of f of two is actually equal to, sorry, I can, this isn't responding well, g of three, because f of two is the value three. So I got three when I plug two into f, which means that I wanna plug three into g, and so that gives us our answer. We actually plugged three into G in the last problem, so that means we're gonna do three times three squared minus one again, um, and so we're gonna get that same answer of 26 because it's the same expression. So for these problems with the numbers, um, we're plugging the number into the function that's closest to it, and then we're taking that answer and we're plugging it into the other function. For the last example, it's a word problem that's really applying the strategy that we just um, used in example three. So close your wear post discounts on social media. The store allows customers to use multiple discounts. They simply need to tell the cashier in which order they would like the discounts applied. Um, so we're checking to see which order we should do the discounts because one should be a better deal. So they aren't gonna result in the same um, ideas. And so they've given us the equations, but I wanna kind of talk about um, what the equations mean. And so the first one is $5 off your next purchase. And so that would be the cost of the item minus five, right? I'm taking five away. The other idea of getting 10% off is different. So if it's $5 off, I'm just subtracting the value. So if I got $10 off, I would just subtract $10 from my total, right? So this f of x is really your total minus the, um, the amount you get off. Okay, so that could change depending on what type of function you have. Um, for g of x, we have two different um, equations, and one is just a simplified equation. So if I'm getting a percentage off of my next purchase, I am subtracting that percentage from my total. So this equation is set up to be the total minus 10% times the total. And so when I'm doing that, 
that ends up being, because the total is always, think about it as one, minus 10% as a decimal is 0 0.1. Um, and so when I do that, it's 1 minus 0 0.1 oops, times my total. So say that um, you're, you had a different percent off, and I'm just kind of giving you a generic just to think about this. Um, and this would be your percent as a decimal. So this is the value that's changing. So if it was 20% off, I would do one minus 0.2 and I would have 0.8 times my total. Um, and so those values are what's gonna change here. So this um, 0.9 is this idea here, this. Um, so if it was, tw again, if it was 20% off, I would do one minus 0.2, so it would be 0.8x. Okay, so that's how that changes depending on what you're doing. And so if I'm doing 10% off, then $5 off, um, that represents F of G. So I'm taking the 10% first, then I'm subtracting $5 off my total. Um, if I do option B, I'm subtracting the $5 first, and then I'm taking the 10% off. So this question is asking us that if the shirt costs $30, which would be a better deal. So what this means is that they're asking us to do F of G of 30 for the first one for option A. Meaning they want us to do um, G of 30 first, which means we're doing 0 0.9 times 30. which gives us a value of 27. So that means that F of G of 30 is equal to F of 27. And to do F of 27, we're doing 27 minus five. So F of 27, sorry, it's not my color coding. I was doing so good. So F of 27 means we're gonna do 27 minus five. And so that means that the cost of this shirt that we wanted to buy would be $22 if we choose option one or option A. So if I'm choosing option B, I'm doing that backwards. I'm subtracting five first and then I'm taking the 90%. I'm doing the 0.9 times that value. So in this one, I want to do G of F of 30 to see if that's a better deal. And so when I do G of, oops, sorry, I didn't, I wrote that in the wrong spot. So if I want to evaluate F of 30 first, I'm taking the $5 off to start. So if F of 30 is 30 minus 5, that's going to give us a value of 25. So then I want to do 0.9 or 90% because I'm paying for 90% of the item if I took 10% off to find the value um, of my total. So if I do G of 25, I'm doing 0 0.9 times 25. And so if I multiply 25 times 0.9, that gives us a value um, of $22 or 22.5. So that means the cost of the shirt would be $22.50. And so seeing from this, option A is a better deal. So you save 50 cents if you choose option A.
Okay, so that's all the stuff for um, composite functions. Again, I did skip a little bit. Um, so you can look on Google Classroom to see what those answers are if you were absent. Otherwise, you could just use this um, video as a review. So it kind of depends on what your purpose for watching is. But that's all for um, composite functions, function composition.